So now we go for a chapter three, which is the network access. Network access involves physical and data link in an OSI model. Now I'm going to explain about the chapter three. So the objective uh, at the end, you have to know how to explain how the physical layer protocols and services support the communication across the data networks. And then you're going to learn, uh, build a simple network using the appropriate and explain the role of the data link layers and you compare the media access control uh, technique and logical topology used in the networks. So three things we're going to learn today, very simple, physical layer protocol, second is network media, and the third, I want to summarize what you have learned. Okay, so for here, network access is this topic for TCP IP, we call it network access, but in the OSI model is physical and data link. So physical layer protocol. So physical layer is something to do with all these devices here. Like for example, this is a router and then you will have a computers, you have the handphone. Now all these end devices, they have their own pop. Okay, they have their own pop that you can connect to. So a uh, physical layer normally dealing with the cable or uh, either is using the wire or you are using the wireless. Okay, so that is done by the physical layer. So now I, I just uh, give some illustration. I use the cable plug-in from the RJ45, okay, to the port here for the LAN port. So in this case, I'm connecting to the wired local area networks in my house, uh, uh, the router, okay. I'm using the cable to do that. This is dealing with the physical layer as well. Or you can use wireless LAN. So the wireless LAN means that, uh, let's say, for example, you are staying at the bungalow or maybe... um your house that involves a first floor and then you have a ground floor you know okay so sometimes when you install the wireless router let's say you install it at uh, this this place uh, for example so uh when you go to the certain location like uh, for example the certain room right you will see that the signal become very very weak okay so what you need to do is you can use the wireless uh, range extender to straighten the signal so that everywhere you can uh, get the same speed of uh, what you subscribe. I mean, through the ISP, Internet Service Provider. Okay, so that is just to tell you that uh, physical layer that, that involve the wire and also the wireless. So if your wireless signal is very weak, you can use the range and standard uh, to do that. Okay, so this just for your illustration that uh, this is how the hub looks like. Majority of the company that like, they don't use hub already because they replace it with a switch. Okay, and then uh, there's a router. So all these three devices, uh, it will tell you the differences. So if I want to route from one network to another network, so you need to use a router. There's no way for you to access your internet if you, your house do not have the router, despite whether it's a router, wireless router or wired router. But for the switch uh, that you can see in our lab, uh, when you go to our lab, uh, you can see that we have a switch and then behind it, there's a lot of uh, PC uh, computers, maybe 24 computers connected to the switch. Uh, then in this case, it's connecting for a local area networks. So that means lab A can uh, share the files to the lab B, but not a, a large geographical location. Uh, okay, so that is how uh, these three devices works seven layers of RSI model. So you go down, there's a, there's a encapsulation and then you go up here is a decapsulation process works. So if I want to illustrate it in meta, this is how it works. The encapsulation will only happen in the session layer. Uh, then your PDU name will change from data. All right, then uh, talk about the physical layer protocol. Uh, physical layer protocol, you uh, if you learn physics, uh, you will see that uh, some electrical signals, uh, if you use a copper cable, so this copper cable transmit uh, using the electrical signal. Okay, if you use uh, this cable, but if you use the fiber optic, yeah, the fiber optic cable, so it will represent it as a uh, different colors, dark color, light colors, or whatsoever. So this is this is called a uh, light pulse. So electrical and the light, which one is faster? Of course, the light is faster, uh, Okay. All right. Then after that, you have a microwave, uh, microwave uh signal. So it's uh, normally using the wireless signals. Okay. 
Okay, so physical layer protocol is if you are using the RJ45, make sure your connectors here, what is the pin code, uh, what will be the color code, all these things must follow. If you want to have a special color code uh, rather than other, other, other devices or whatsoever, you have to get approval from this international standard organization. Okay, because they are the one who control all this protocol. You can only uh, use the Apple earphone when you are using the Apple devices. Why? Because they have their own standard organization that uh, specifically for their own vendor. If you don't have this standard organization, uh, you imagine uh, if I want to charge my handphone using that connector, uh, then it doesn't match with your cable power supply or whatsoever, right? Wow, the whole house will consider burn. You get what I mean? That's the idea. So they are the one that control the standard and then control uh, how secure it is and then make sure everybody in this world will follow the standard. Now let's talk about the physical layer fundamental uh, principles here. So the media of the corporate cable, uh, we have the physical components. We, uh, we are using the UTP, coaxial cable, connectors. You have uh, network interface cards. You have the parts. You have the interfaces. Now all this is the corporate cable. So corporate cable will have a different uh, uh, components. And then you are dealing with a different encoding and you are de dealing with a different signal link. Okay, this is just the idea of for your physical layer fundamentals principles. Okay, same thing goes to the bandwidth. Uh, the unit of the bandwidth here is uh, the BPS, okay, B per second. So I uh, just need to let you know how do you identify this. Lah. If I say, okay, my hard disk, I got 10 terabit per second. So you know that, wow, there's a lot. So if, if, I, if I say 10 Gbps compared with 10 tera, of course, tera will be uh, higher than Gb because uh, it's a 10 to the power of 12 bit per second so, so this bandwidth means that you will have the uh, the certain measurement to convert okay if you want to convert to the bit per second okay so the the fastest and the highest one is terabit per second okay now talk about throughput ah this one uh, just uh sharing my own experience to you uh. When you want to subscribe to the internet service provider, how how do you know that how many speed you have to subscribe? Whether you want to go for 100 megabit per second or 100, 150 megabit per second or whatsoever, make sure you use the Okla or any of the these are open source one, the free source online to test your speed. When you test the speed, the download speed is 80, your upload speed is only 8, right? So I think you can just subscribe until within that 100 megabit per second only. Do not need to subscribe more than that because if you subscribe more than that, when you do a speed test, uh, you are wasting your money because your location cannot support higher than that. So this throughput means that uh, you subscribe 100 megabit per second, but the real data that can pass through is 80.78 only. Uh, you imagine that this is the quality of your uh, throughput. Okay, next, uh, we talk about the types of the physical media. So uh, this is the one that we will, we will use fast internet. Uh, fast internet, the shape is like this. Huh? And then you will have your mini uh, B connectors. You got the USB type A connectors, uh, gigabit or whatever it is. This is called a physical media. We call it an interface. Okay, that's about a 3.1. For a 3.2 network media, we talk about the copper cabling. Each of it got pair, 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 all this pair together. It will twist it together. Why is it twisted together? Because according to the research, when this cable twisted, it will reduce the interference of noise. Okay, that's why they're twisted together. Okay. Um, the network media, uh, then you have uh, this uh, a pure digital signal. So you have to understand one thing. Uh, when you uh, use the cable, uh, because the cable is using the electrical uh, electrical signal, so sometimes when you want to uh, install it from one location to another location, you have to pull a long cable, right? Why, why long cable will always be slow transmission compared to a short cable? Because when you use a uh, long cables, the duration for a transmission times uh, taken longer time, then your signal will be distorted. The copper cabling will have this problem, especially during the raining day, uh, whereby this is a pure digital signal. You should have this type of signal, right? So sometimes your signal will, will not be the perfect curve like this.
okay to the certain extent if your your cable exposed to the noise interference of noise especially when you install your cable in the manufacturing company which is a lot of noise you don't ground it on the floor or you don't put on top of the ceiling uh, if you don't do that uh, then you expose to a lot of noise sound and then you you will cause these, these uh, interference signals distorted suddenly uh, it's supposed to be zero here but your signal change it will happen okay so that is just to let you know if you use the copper cabling that's why copper cabling is cheap and then you can only support a very short distance okay it's affordable and short distance only yeah so if you want to connect from one city to another city don't use the copper cabling you can use the fiber optic cable okay now so this is just uh, to show you the arch architecture of the unshadowed twisted pay uh as i mentioned just now why it's twisted together because it will protect the signal from interference of noise okay and next is about the television cables right uh, when you have this television cable wow it will be isolated uh with uh, many many layers okay you've got jacket when you uh take out the outer you will have a braided shell when you take out again you will have a foil shells and all that so why have to protect so many layers because only uh want to make sure that the transmission inside here uh, is protected uh, interference of the noise okay because the cable sensitive with the noise if you uh, expose to the uh, noise then it will cause the this uh, signal distortion and the 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 one that i show you just now the problem okay so there's a coarser cable this is how it looks like okay if you see this okay like like this uh type of f type n type and bnc this is all called the coarser cable now in the real organization right they they will store their cables grounded onto ceiling okay or, or maybe grounded on the floor okay they were they were manage it properly and uh, they will elaborate each of the cable they will elaborate okay so let's go for properties of the utp cabling so this utp cabling uh if you look at this is how the design looks like and then it's connected to the connectors and these connectors transmit the signal here okay when you plug into your computer uh, uh your your this uh cable right the, all this cable will have a pink color code yeah it will go through this gold color connector so this gold color to connector is the one that in touch with our computer rj45 and then uh all these will have the uh, color code itself where should you install it okay how how, how do you put the this uh, what you call that the color so that you want to form the stretch cable or rollover cable or the crossover cable okay next property of the fiber optic cabling longer distance uh support uh completely immune wow you know immune means that uh, i don't care how the interference of this noise works right i am immune to it so it will use to interconnect the network devices so if you are concerned about the speed and you want to support longer distance you can use fiber optic but just to let you know fiber optic is expensive okay so how why is it expensive of course it's protected by a, a different layers mm -hmm. okay you look at this like, design here uh it will have a glass coral nine microns uh, protected and then the real cable to transmit the data is here only and then all this is the jacket all this is all the all outer protection okay you have a single mode you got the multi mode and fiber optic cable is now being used for four types of industrial uh some somebody is using it for enterprise network some uh some company will use it for fiber to the home and then you will have a long haul networks okay used by the service provider which is your telecom to connect uh to the different countries or the the, the cities and then you will go through the submarine cable networks used to provide reliable high speed high capacity solution capable of surviving in harsh undersea environment wow that's the, that's why it's very very expensive imagine that the cable pass through under sea uh, so our focus in this course is on for a fiber uh, within the enterprise networks and then this is all the cables for a uh, patch cards okay and uh, UTP cabling compared to the fiber optic uh, in terms of bandwidth support 
uh, UTP can only support until 10 gigabit per second, but for the fiber optic can use up to 100 gigabit per second. And the distance is uh, this one, 100 meters only, this one is 1, 1 km. Okay, then uh, of course everything, this is good lah. Okay, but in terms of the installation skills, yeah, I uh, need you to have a skills to install it. Why? Because fiber optic can be met by glass, so it's easily broken. And then the safety precaution also is high. Okay, so you have to make sure that uh, how do you protect that cable. Okay, then uh, connector cost also is the, is, the, is the expensive. Okay, so that's about it. So let's go for okay, wireless media. Okay, so wireless media will cover coverage area, interference, security, and shared medium. Uh, all this is the signal of the wireless media. So wireless media will have different types. What is all this name for? Uh, very simple. The speed will cause a different. Okay, so the the uh, different speed will support a different name. Uh, okay, Wi-Fi standard. And this is called wireless LAN. If you see something like this, uh, there is uh, antenna like this. Uh, so this is uh, uh, using the wireless. Okay. And then that's all. That is about the summary for what we have learned for this Chapter 3, so what I learned for this module. So before any network communication can occur, physical connection to the local network, either wired or wireless, must be established. You need to use the either the cable or, or the wireless uh, to establish your connection. Then only we can communicate. So that's why physical layer exists and you use the electronic circuitry and then media and also the connectors Okay, by the engineers. Then uh, they will have a standard functional area, like for example, encoding, signaling, and then you learn about three types of the cabling, like a coaxial cable, STP, and UDP. UDP is unsheltered twisted pair. This is sheltered, and this is coaxial cable. Then you learn about all these cable controlled by the standard organization. And then the main cable for the wiring is a stretch through and also the crossover cable. Okay, so we learned about the optical fiber as well. There has four types of optical fiber. Uh, Multi-mode got many types here. And then we learned about the wireless. We learned about the different types of the speed of the wireless. Why is it called YMAX? Because of the distance that support is different. Okay, so we learned about the wireless LAN require a wireless AP access point and the wireless NIC adapter. That's it. So last but not least, I want you to memorize this. PC and router, they belong to the same category. Why I said so? Because PC got uh, RAM, ROM, uh, NVRAM, and so on. Router also got iOS, uh, uh, the RAM, the ROM, NVRAM, and so on. Okay, so these two is same category. Switch and hub is the same category. Okay, so uh, uh, very simple. If you connect from same category, you use a crossover cable. The one that I, I mentioned like this, the box inside here. That means if PC to PC, I use crossover. Router to router, I use crossover. PC to router, crossover. Router to PC, crossover. If I use switch to switch, hub to hub, switch to hub, hub to switch, I use crossover. Is that clear? So you remember this table, the box inside here, PC and router, they belong to the same category. Switch and hub, they belong to the same category. Any category inside here, I connect, I use the crossover cable. Any category, I, I use this box, I connect, I use the crossover cable. Example, PC to router, router to router, PC to PC, router to PC, all is using crossover. But if PC go to this box, switch. PC connect to switch, I use stretch through cable. PC to hub, stretch through cable. Switch to router, stretch through cable, da da da, and so on. That's all. Okay, so PC and server is the same. Lah. Okay, so uh, uh, this is how you're going to uh, uh, understand this. Huh? So please remember this uh, formula so that when you use the packet tracer later on, you if you use the wrong cable, right? I mean, your device cannot ping successfully. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much.